Okay. Um, in more recent years, you've done a lot of coverage of politics and moderating debates and so on. I was hoping to ask you um, how you think or if you think coverage of politics has changed from when you first started out to now, and how has it changed, and has it changed for good or for ill? or The coverage of politics? Yeah. Polit the, and of politicians. Uh, uh, I think we're much more aggressive now than we were 20, 30, 40 years ago. We want answers. Uh, we want uh, information. Uh, and we have so many better techniques in going through financial records and, you know, with the internet and statements and almost everything. So if Donald Trump, for example, wants to be a serious presidential candidate, you know, his whole, you know, life of uh, business, uh, personal, political, everything is going to be exposed. And it's now relatively easy to get access like that. You know, to look at previous speeches and interviews and flip-flops, stuff like that. Uh, uh, in the old days, you know, you used to have to go to the library and look at research and you know, archives. Uh, and, you know, it was, uh, it was much more difficult. Uh, so it's really changed a lot. And now there's, the other thing that's changed, there are so many more organizations, par uh, partisan organizations, uh, some of them partisan, or, but others are just objective, you know, think tanks or whatever, that are looking at this kind of stuff. And I admire people who are willing to um, go into politics and expose themselves and open up their lives and their businesses and their sta financial statements and income tax returns. Uh, and let it all hang out. Because if you want to do that, uh, you know, you, you, you're, go ahead, do it. But it raises the question, should anything be off limits? Or is everything I, In this day and age, if you want to be president or you want to be a senator or a governor, there's very little that's going to be off limits. Uh, maybe in the 60s and 50s and 40s, you know, there was a journalistic uh, gentleman's agreement. You don't talk about women. You don't talk about this or that. Uh, I'm sure that was the case. but. In, in the last 20 years, I, I don't see much, if anything, is off limits. I think that's the big change. I mean, when you look back at the Lewinsky scandal, mm -hmm. I mean, do you think it was um, it was too much coverage that it you know it, it proved to be that Clinton had to spend so much time dealing covered, with the fallout? That, I covered yeah. that every single day. Yeah, from the day the story broke until the impeachment and the trials and. and uh, you know, you can look back and say it was ridiculous, or you can look back and say, what was the President of the United States thinking when he had an affair with a young woman who was an intern at the White House? Um, I mean, it was, I remember when that, we first got word that, you know, that this was going on, I said to myself, that's impossible, the President of the United States. Uh, and lo and behold, um, we eventually learned the truth, the whole truth, and so much more than we ever wanted to know about in that Ken Starr report. I was the network television pool reporter um, when um, uh, Bill Clinton, a few days after the story broke, was in the Roosevelt Room of the White House in the West Wing, and he looked at the cameras. He was basically looking at me because I was representing the television networks. You know, I was the pool representative in there. And he said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Ms. Lewinsky. And uh, I mean, I was there when, when that happened. Uh, and I remember it very, very vividly. Uh, did we go, you know, it was a huge story for a year. Uh, did we go overboard in the media? Were we ethically, you know, uh, challenged or whatever? We were, ch this was all new territory. I mean, not just for me, but for all my colleagues. I don't think we had ever. You know, covered a president involved in a sexual scandal like this. Well, and what about what I think of as sort of the European argument that Americans are silly about this kind of stuff, that that people in public life tend to have these big egos, and part of what goes with the big ego is the big sexual appetite, and this is their, this seems to be their foible, and that really, you know, we should just look at are they competent, are they doing the job we elected them to do, and, and look the other way about this stuff. Yeah. It's like, who cares? You know, it's their uh, private life. I guess that's the difference between the Americans and the Europeans. In Europe, you're right, I was just in Europe the other day. You know, they, they don't really care if their leader, you know, had multiple marriages, multiple affairs, whatever. You know, that's human nature. We just want to make sure there are jobs and the economy is well run, national security works. Uh, and certainly in Italy, in Spain, and, and in France, it's, it's, it's like that. They don't have 
they'll report all that stuff, but it's not going to be a big issue for those people. And but here, you know, we're Americans, and you know, it's obviously a different culture, a different attitude, and it's a much big, bigger issue for us. But it sort of raises the question: Does the media make it a big issue, or is the public interest in it drive the media to cover it? I think it it's part of both. I think yeah. the media. Uh, the public is interested, the media will report it, the public then becomes more interested, Re media reports more of it, they want more details, so it, it's, it's sort of a two-way street. But I think American, the, by and large, the American people have uh, a different, uh, you know, attitude towards these things than the Europeans by and large do. That's just a fact of life.